I'm one of the lead lecturers for the Prague Design Program. I also helped co-write it, so it's very dear to my heart. Um, I also taught it when um, in its previous iteration. It's very familiar with the before and the after and all the changes involved, so I'm happy to walk you through it. Currently, the product design program is split into five phases, and it's um, we've made some very intentional choices on what to include and what to make this pro how to make this program differentiate from all the other boot camps out there. Um, the first two phases are pretty much all the tools and techniques you'll need. Um, so we go through process UX product design from UX lens, and then the second phase is product U uh, pr product design from the UI lens. Um, and gather all those tools under our belt. Phases three and four are when we get to practice those skills in project format and pretty much create portfolio pieces, right? In it, we add, we try to add as much context as possible given its product design, also how product design plays into a role with not only UX, UI, but culturally, how you speak to stakeholders, how you, um, can become a part of a job after the program. Uh, we saw this gap, right, um, in other boot camps, which is, and me as a, you know, I'm a practitioner. I'm a practitioner of UX since the past two decades now. And I know that when I'm hiring from boot camp, um, you know, graduates from boot camp, one of the things I'm looking out for is like, is this person going to be okay in my team? Are they going to fit in? Um, are they going to come and change up the dynamics, right? So a lot of it is personality fit. It's also about communication. So we try to include communication from the beginning to the end and infuse all those real world soft skills and culture um, skills so that you can come out feeling really, really confident and aware of all the things that are thrown your way. So it's very exciting. Um, those uh, and then the fifth phase you wrap up all your projects um you refine all your previous projects and you prepare a portfolio that is ready to be that is job ready right and you put in one case study you work with a career coach and then you're out interviewing and and trying your best putting your best foot forward um we have had mm, three three or four cohorts go already and um the response has been spectacular it's just so much better, you know, technology is ever changing and the way we've designed that program is to react to that change. So we pivot, we change as we see new technology come in, as we see new needs come in, trends come in, in the industry. So it's a very relevant program today and hopefully in the months to come, right? Um, so that was your little preview on product design. It's five phases. You have a live program, which is, um, you know, consider yourself pausing your life for 15 weeks. Um, it's a full time program. You're expected to come in 9 a.m., 6 p.m., work weekends. On the, it's, it's very intense. And then it's 15 weeks, right? And pretty, pretty much consider that um, a takeover of your life where you're very, very intentional about moving and pivoting your career choice. Then we have a few flex options. Um, currently, we're offering flex options that are 20 weeks, uh, 40 weeks and 60 week cadence, in which you have more flexibility, you don't have to show up for a set amount of hours, you can get caught up throughout the week, throughout the weeks, and you have a little bit more flexibility. So it's for people who have life and they can't really, you know, uh, work around it, they may have a family to take care of, they may have a job, you know, paycheck to collect, whatever it may be. So we do offer those programs and, and um, you know, uh, it's, it's different intensity, but the outcome is designed to be the same. Okay. Um, all right. So we'll probably address those questions that are more specific to the program and more specific to Flatiron School towards the end, Jelani. And now Sounds we'll good. begin. Now we'll begin talking about what we're here for. Uh, for those of you who signed up, thank you. Uh, we are going to talk about something that a lot of people kind of throw around, and I'm going to um, help kind of decipher what this word, this terminology means and what it does. So I'm going to share my screen and uh, please use the chat to let me know if for whatever reason you cannot see my screen. All right. Great. Okay. I could have titled this user flows because that's what you guys signed up for, but here's what I titled it as. The user goes there, 
the user does this. That's essentially what we're looking to do, right? So I really want to break it down into, um, you know, into some core concepts and into language that that we all, you know, understand. And we're not going to use jargon just to sound fancy. We're just going to understand what it is that product designers do in the most simplistic way and help you understand how this program helps you put on that head, um, put on put on that space and allow you to look at problems from a different perspective. OK. Um, now, if I, you know, before we go go forward, let's kind of define what a user flow is officially before we move on. OK. A user flow is essentially a diagram um, that depicts at a glance the path a user uses or will take. And in this context, through your digital product, be it your app, a website, a dashboard, a kiosk to achieve a certain goal. That's all. How do I go from point A to point B? How do I reserve tickets on the United app? OK, how do I book an appointment? with my doctor on WebMD. Whatever it is that your task is, a user flow depicts that one point to the second point, right? All right, this is especially to, I, I believe it was Larry from Philippines, all right? We'll talk about how to make coffee, simple, all right? Let's kind of get some answers on how to make coffee. If you were to describe this, process of making coffee, coffee, what would that look like from start to finish, right? You get up, you go make a coffee. You get up, you turn on the coffee machine, you make a cup of coffee. Does that sound like a user flow to you guys? Is that the path you get off from the bed, go to your coffee machine, turn on the machine, you have a cup of coffee, right? Yes, no, sure, it's too general. Okay, let's get a little bit more specific. You get up, you leave the bedroom, you head to the kitchen, you turn on the coffee machine. Is there coffee in it? No? Well, what do you have to do before that? Right, you have to go Yes, you can, if you have an espresso machine, you can refill a water, okay? If it, it's another machine, you ref, refill the water and then you can go see if the coffee beans are in there. If not, you're gonna go and grind some coffee beans, okay? If, it, if the coffee beans are ground, then you bring them into the coffee machine, you put them in, you make sure there's water, then you turn on the machine. You see that? What if you don't have that machine? What if you have a K-cup machine? Then what? What do you have an espresso machine? What if you guys are an instant coffee drinkers? I may be a little judgmental there, but if you are an instant coffee drinker, your process changes a little bit, right? You select your pod, you press the buttons, you put your cup under it, you choose, you select your cup. Is the cup clean? Do you need to rinse it out, right? There are lots of things that we talk about as steps in order to make our coffee, cu cup of coffee, right? Um, I think there was another one. You get up, put on glasses, go to bathroom, go to kitchen, fill pot with water, put grounds in, turn on machine. There's another Nespresso machine fan, totally get it. But in order to understand, or if, if my problem, if a product design problem was, we need to make the coffee making part of every morning smoother, better, faster, quicker, right? Without, without understanding the steps that currently it takes for us or a user to get coffee from point A to point B, you cannot find a solution, okay? So the idea is a user flow helps us see all the steps from point A to point B, okay? Benefits of making this user flow or to see where the user goes from point A to point B 
and what it does is, you know, there are four things that I've kind of listed down here to evaluate how things work now. How can you fix something or how can you add something to something you don't know? So the first and foremost thing you want to do is sit back and be like, all right, before I change this up, let me understand how it actually works now, today. Fair? I love that. Get out, get dressed, and get Duncan. Um, all right, cool. So now, now again, depending on who your client is, you need to first understand, okay, tell me where you are. Let's look at where things are working today. Secondly, find opportunities for improvement or problem areas to focus on. Once you put those steps down, you can then circle and come back to, oh, whoa. You know what the problem is? Maybe if we always ensure the, cough, uh, the water is filled the night before, um, maybe if we have a timer set up on the coffee machine, maybe it is, um, you know, an automatic coffee grinder within the machine. And it's only one button that does everything. Maybe that too is set on a timer. You don't have to do anything. You just wake up to your cup of coffee, right? So unless you understand what's, how many steps it takes and what the context of that is, which is the machine, what is the user, what is the distance from the bedroom to the kitchen, et cetera, you can't really find those opportunities for improvement or problem areas to focus on. Another very important benefit of making user flows is in the word itself. It's to empathize with the user, okay? Instead of personalizing it and saying, you know what, this is not a problem because I'm just gonna get up and go get Duncan, or I have an espresso machine, right? We as product designers need to enter every project, not assuming that we know anything about the user. We are not the user, we are the designer, right? So making the user flow helps us empathize with the user, put us in their shoes and see within their context what their step-to-step -step looks like, okay? And in doing these three things, we prevent costly and time-consuming errors, right? We don't make assumptions. We don't kind of personalize and make it all about our problems, right? Um, we don't just assume what a problem could be and start fixing it before actually figuring it out. And we don't assume what the process looks like today. Okay. We are now going to work together to do something similar, right? Actually, before that, I want to show you guys something, which is one of my favorite videos. And I'm going to share that with you just to kind of understand how interesting user flows could be. Okay. Please let us know if for whatever reason you can't see it or you can't hear it, okay? On purpose, he knows how to make one. What's up, the internet? You know what? I'm hungry. I could really go for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Do you guys think you can write down some instructions and teach me how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Yeah. Then do it. I knew we were going to do this. I heard dad talking to mom. Don't choke yourself on my hand. Sometimes I do when you tell them. <laughs> <laughs> Step one, get two pieces of bread out. Got them. Get a butter knife and get some PB. Take one piece of bread, spread it around with the butter knife. No, dad, with the peanut butter. I'm just doing what it says. It says, take one piece of bread, spread it around with the, bu with the butter knife. Hold on. Get some jelly, rub it on the other half of the bread. Dad, open the jelly. Well, it doesn't say to do that. Put the breads together on top of each other. Take a big bite. 
Oh, good. I'm starving. Take two pieces of white bread out of the bag. Take the lid off the jar of peanut butter. Get a butter knife and stick it inside of the peanut butter jar. With the knife, scoop a bit of peanut butter out of the... A bit? That means like a lot. A bit means a lot? In my world... Spread your scoop of peanut butter onto one of your pieces of bread with the knife. All right. There we go. You're doing better than before, though. Open the jelly jar. Squeeze it onto the other piece of bread. No. Done. Closer. Get two pieces of bread. Get some peanut butter. Take the peanut butter knife. Open the peanut butter. Put the knife in the PB. Get some jelly. Open the jelly. No. Squirt the jelly onto the bread. Take the butter knife with the peanut butter on it. Wipe it all over the piece of bread that's blank. Take the butter knife, rub the jelly all over the piece of bread. Oh, you're doing better. Oh. That's all over. Put the two pieces on top of each other. This is how I bend. <laughs> Take two pieces of white bread out of the bag. Take the lid off the jar of peanut butter. Get a butter knife and stick it inside of the peanut butter jar. With the knife, scoop some of the peanut butter out of the inside of the jar. Spread <laughs> your scoop of peanut butter onto one of your pieces of bread with the knife. No! Squeeze some jelly onto the other piece of bread. Spread the jelly on the bread with the butter knife. Put your two pieces of bread, peanut butter and jelly sides together. <laughs> Done. Get two pieces of bread. Get some peanut butter. Get some jelly. Open the peanut butter. Get a butter knife. Put the butter knife in the peanut butter. Take the butter knife out of the peanut butter. <laughs> you did it wrong. No. <laughs> take one piece of bread and take the butter knife that has the peanut butter on it and spread it all over the top of the piece of bread. Dad, the... That's the top. I mean, the sides. Squirt some on another piece of bread. Take the butter knife, rub it all over the top of the piece of bread. I quit. You're not even making any sense. Sorry, you ruined it on purpose. He knows how to make one. <laughs> I know, Evan, it's the joke. It's the, it's the game that we're playing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how to eat a piece of bread? <laughs> <laughs> you want to take your sandwich with you? Oh, this is really terrible. It looks like a yummy sandwich. I'm glad I made that for you. <laughs> Can I have the same one with it? Yeah, go take that one to mommy. Okay. For some of you who've seen it, yes, it is absolutely the cutest video ever, right? It's hilarious, but it is the truth. As product designers, we need to think about each and every step for the user so the user doesn't quit on us, right? That's essentially it. So now let's watch a family friendly movie together. Okay. We are going to go in here and you guys are going to tell me if my problem or if the user's path was to find a find and watch a family friendly movie, what would the steps look like? 
I'm going to be looking at the chat. Feel free to let me know. We can begin with turn on TV. Or you guys can even tell me, no, don't turn on TV. Alexa, find a family friendly. Okay. Let's ask Alexa to find a movie. Next step. Pick a movie. How are you going to pick a movie? Wait, 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 before we pick a movie, before we locate the remote, what if Alexa gives you a family-friendly movie? What's the next step? Is it to pick that movie? What Alexa says I do? How many of you listen to Alexa and follow her to the T? What she recommends is what you guys do. <laughs> All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. Wait, 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 wait. So we ask Alexa to find a family-friendly movie. And then we're gonna say, actually, we're gonna delete this. And we're gonna put a diamond here. In a user flow, the squares represent the steps and the diamonds represent the decision points, okay? So I'm going to ask oops, sorry. Did you like Alexa's suggestion? If yes, ask oops. Sorry about that. Ask Alexa to play it. What happens if it's a no? What would you guys do if it's a no? What's next step? How are we gonna look for other suggestions? Okay, we're gonna keep at Alexa. Okay, ask Alexa. <laughs> Select suggestion. And then what's gonna happen? Did you like Alexa's suggestion? If yes, ask Alexa to play it. If no, ask for another suggestion. And I think, is there anything else that could happen here? Are we kind of good? Oh, someone said, let's try something else. Search new releases. How are we gonna um, search new releases? Alexa, find a Disney movie appropriate for an ages nine to 12. Oh, look at that. Need to find a streaming app with the movies. Text your friends for suggestions, right? Now we start all over again and be like, what what streaming service will you use alexa if alexa sorry if alexa then ask alexa okay do you see what i'm doing here guys so basically saying the way we alter our decisions, each time we make a user problem, we want to keep in mind all the different types of scenarios. What would the user do? Would they first go to find remote control? Would they do their search on their mobile device and then come? Would they search for their would the movie they're gonna watch tonight on the phone on their way back from work? Right? Would you then say, Alexa, 
remind me the movies that I've saved onto some favorites list, right? What if I don't have Alexa? There's an assumption that you're going with that everybody has an Alexa. What if somebody has Google? What if someone does not believe in any of these bots living and listening to everything they say, right? Ask friends for suggestions, right? What if they don't write back at a decent time? Okay. Do you have subscription to Amazon Prime? Do you have a subscription to Netflix? Where are you gonna watch it? How are you gonna watch it? How much time do you have? Is there a specific theme that you have in mind? Do you see all these questions that I'm asking? These questions are very important for us to assess the context of not you, the user, okay? It's also possible that you're waiting at the airport. No one asked me the question of, well, where are they watching? Are they at an airport and they need to entertain their child? The context would determine whether you're talking to Alexa or you're going into a phone and going into Google search. Fair enough? Okay, so that's one way of thinking about user flow, which is give me a context, give me a problem, and then I wanna start and put myself in the user's shoe to determine in the given context, what path would they take from point A to get to point B, okay? Yes, the environment which de would determine which device, which neither of you pulled for me. Where are you? Where is the user? Are they at home? When did they make this decision to watch a family-friendly movie? Is this something they're gonna do over the weekend and it's Monday and they're like, oh my God, what are we gonna watch this Friday? You don't know, you haven't asked any of these questions. Could that be something that the user wants to do? So with user research, we talk to a few users and come to an understanding of better empathy with the user. And say we come in and decide our user, the user we're designing for, could search for movies on the phone or on their tablet or on the device itself at the time they wanna watch, before the time they wanna watch and they wanna save it for later. And these are all the contexts that we need to design for. And we cannot design for that unless we understand all the steps and all the if ands of those steps and the repercussions of the steps. The squares are steps and diamonds are decisions. And that's pretty standard for user flows. Yes, okay. Um, you can do, there are times where squares are sometimes used for pages. So when you go into, um, thinking about digital products and not just the task, but like, okay, how would someone go in this app from page one to page, you know, from, from buying a sweatshirt to checking out? Each, each square could represent a page. So not necessarily just a step, but a page. Okay, but either scenario, you need to decide, well, what if the person wants to keep looking even after they selected the t-shirt they weren't they were going to buy what if they didn't like the price what if the size wasn't there what if it cannot arrive at the right time okay what if it's dry clean only and they need to restart their search putting everything together in the user flow helps us understand and helps us prioritize what we're solving for first for the user to find success because the last thing you want is for someone like that kid to get super frustrated and quit, okay? So we really, really wanna be thoughtful and methodical about how we approach design thinking when we're thinking about digital products. It's not as simple as we have a problem, let's brainstorm solutions, let's go straight to solutions. At first, we need to understand where the problem lies, okay? So, we watched a family movie and we understood it. Now we want to find opportunities. How could we use user flows to find opportunities, not just understand or evaluate what the current flow looks like, but let's find opportunities, okay? So in this case, there's a fast casual place, okay? 
this fast casual place, I'm very great at naming names, is called Burgers R Us, okay? I'm actually pulling this from a design challenge that I actually give to prospective people I want to hire and bring onto my team, okay? So the prompt being, you are working at Burgers R Us, uh, and Burgers R Us are, is saying, you know what? We need to make the whole order taking and order delivery process a lot more seamless because there are a lot of issues. Here are said issues. Users want to order quickly and not wait to get food. No one likes to wait, wait a long time for food. The cashier, the person who's taking um, the orders, hates leaving the long line of customers to go to the kitchen and ask questions. They just want to get through the line as quickly as possible. Custom orders take the kitchen staff longer to prepare, and they still get a lot of the orders wrong. So there's some disconnect, right? So we want to be able to allow users to order burgers without onions or customize meals, right? So we're going to look at a sample flow here. You enter the fast, fast casual store. You go to the cashier, okay? Do you know what you want to order? Yes? Okay, great. Keep, keep at the cashier, order burger with a side of fries. Cashier rings it up, makes pay, make the payment, get receipt, wait. Pretty straightforward. But that's not the user that we are solving for. We're solving for someone who may not know what they want and may have questions on customization. So the user goes to the cashier, do not know what they want. Then they look at the menu, ask if the selected burger comes with onions. The cashier isn't sure and asks the kitchen. The cashier comes back and tells you it has onions. And then the decision is, wait, wait a second. Did you like onions? Yes. Okay, go ahead and order it. All good. If you don't, go back, look at the menu, try the customization process again, okay? Let's open it up to the class and see where do you think there are opportunities or problem areas in this user flow? They don't want fries, they want cheese. Yeah, that's a that's a problem that we can actually put into the user flow, right? Okay, yes, there is one problem area that we've identified. Cashier has to walk to the kitchen for answers. Hates it, right? This is a problem area right here. We've now identified a key issue. Another thing is sandwich condiments. Again, if we, reframe this from a solution to now a problem, we can say the condiments and options are not visible on the menu. What a burger contains or the ingredients are not highlighted in the menu. So there is an opportunity to fix the menu for it to be more inclusive of all the ingredients. Great, another opportunity is the menu could be accessible before reaching the cashier, right? Maybe at an entrance point, think about what you want before you enter the line, right? So another opportunity. Menus can be posted online so guests can see what the restaurant offers in advance. Excellent, yes, right? Another opportunity. Yes, the cashier's knowledge of the menu. The cashier shouldn't have to walk back. There should be training around the cashiers, you know, that work, uh, work the front, front of the line. Yes, the menu could include ingredients, right? 
have a product description of each item on the menu where the cashier can see it. So make it accessible to the cashier, not only to the customer, but also the cashier. What else? Yeah, build in the ingredients in the point of sale system into the machine so they can see exactly as they're plugging it in what that burger includes. Right. Yes, there's another problem that we haven't thought of, which is why is the kitchen messing up custom orders? Is it a problem of input? Is it a problem of understanding or loss of translation from customer to cashier to kitchen staff? Right. Maybe I said no onions and the cashier, it was really, really loud and heard more onions. Happens all the time, guys. Don't tell me it doesn't happen. Right? Look at that. Another interface. Maybe you remove the cashier altogether and there's an interface where the user can customize the burger on their app. Right? Yes, another solution. Again, I think you guys are thinking solutions, but another thing is reiteration. Can the user, can the customer see their order details and not just get a receipt, right? So do you see how just putting a simple user flow with just one or two decision points helps us get all of this opportunity for innovation and change, right? From this, we could also see all the problems are coming around the middleman of being a cashier. How can we make the order intake process more seamless so the user has direct control over what to add and how to customize your meal. Okay. So what I want you guys to do, I'm gonna share this link with you in the chat. Okay. And what I want you to do is come up with an alternative user flow. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And I want you to come up with an alternative user flow that could help navigate the problem areas and come up with an alternative user flow that will increase efficiency and create more areas of success. It may take you a couple of minutes to sign up. Just if you have a Gmail, you can quickly sign up. Um, it's open to everyone. Feel free to copy this, right? Select it all, guys. Duplicate it, you do click the option button and you can duplicate it and then create your own little user flow. All right. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna help make a few duplicates because I think you guys are there you go. Just start pulling, and each of these are editable. So you can tell me about what steps you're going to take, what decision points are. This is not the way it needs to be configured. So feel free to change the location of the decision diamonds, the number of the decision diamonds, the colors of the frames, right? The only way, the only, I just literally pulled a template that Miro offers. Um, and the way they've color coded it is to say, this is the customer part. This is the cashier part. This is the kitchen part. So, but feel free to simplify it and keep it all white. Okay. And as you guys are doing it, we can start thinking about it. Some of you said we can bypass the cashier. Some of you said we can, um, you know, have the customer order directly on an app. What does that look like? What does that new user flow look like? And, and in this design challenge, as you guys are working on this, I'll, I'll kind of continue talking. In this design challenge, as I've gotten people who are in their interview process and come in to apply for a job, what I'm looking for is not the solution. So keep in mind what I'm looking for or what hiring managers are looking for is the way you think about problems, the way you arrive at solutions, not the actual solution itself. The questions you ask, the opportunities you find, because people are hiring you 
not to come up with a solution, but to ask the right questions that'll get you closer to the solution. Of course, as product designers, you're going to provide the solution, but you're not meant to know all of those at the spot. It's okay to say, that's a great question, and I'll figure it out, right? So as people are thinking about these design challenges, as people are given prompts like this, they'll be like, okay, where do I start? And the minute somebody starts with the user flow, I know that they have the right thought process. Someone who goes straight to say like, all right, it's gonna be an app and it's gonna look like this. Da da da, bada bing, bada boom, I'm done. Right? Please ask questions. Let me know where you're struggling so I can go over it. Right, contactless ordering, right? I want you to use things like, what is contactless ordering? Is it a kiosk? Is it an app? Is it a voice command thing? Is it AI built in as you walk into the restaurant, right? I don't know who that is, I'm just going around. Right? Think about what that means. Think about this user in a new context where it, we could either reduce steps, reduce friction, or reduce that emotion of frustration. User is frustrated, cashier is frustrated, the kitchen staff is frustrated. Can we alleviate any of these just by thinking about the steps a user has to take to get to their order? Some of the really good challenges or participants of these challenges have also been people who have stopped and asked me those questions. Is this a suburban joint? Is it in the city? Right? Are your, is your target audience loyal customers who've come to Burgers or Us tons of times? Is it a brand new person coming into Burgers or Us? Right? So ask those questions to provide context. Remember with the coffee machine? Remember with the streaming of a family-friendly movie? Without context, you cannot arrive at the problem, let alone the solution, okay? And if we are, no, you could, you could work together. You can make, what I want you to do is kind of practice. You want, I want you to duplicate the user flow and propose something. Just want you guys to think out loud or think virtually on this mirror board. And what I want you to think about is, if we were to, you know, if you were to get something like this in an actual environment, what would that be like? What questions would you ask, right? And in this program, we're going to encourage you to be lifelong learners. We're going to ask you to challenge um, assumptions. We're going to ask you to um, question the unknown and always seek criticism, seek areas uh, where you can improve from, right? Not seek praise because when you're only looking for it looks good, you have nothing to improve. So our whole entire program is based upon this idea that you check out your ego at the door, you put yourself in the user's shoes, you ask the right questions, and you go ahead and try to apply design thinking. What you guys are doing here just on a quick half an hour workshop is you're applying design thinking, right? So, um, well, I'm not sure what your question is here. Did you want me to just read out the prompt to you? Is that correct? If you guys just want me to read out the prompt to you, it is how can we solve for three problem areas, right? That I've identified. Users want to order quickly. Cashiers want to go through the line quickly and not have like angry 25 people waiting online, the kitchen staff wants to get accurate description of custom orders so they don't make errors. Okay, 
And so someone uh, I would offer this challenge to would usually be like a two hour workshop. I'll have them come into the room. Um, I won't even share this user flow. I'll say like, okay, here's the challenge. The prompt is this fast casual place wants to create a user, uh, wants to create a solution to alleviate this, these problems. How would you apply the design process to this project? And they could go ahead and tell us, well, first I'd love to see where the user is based. Then I'd like to see what they're currently doing. Let's identify their process as it exists today before we look to um, better it or enhance it or improve it, right? And that's a great first step. Let's look at this. Customer walks in, walks up to the cashier. Customer is greeted with double screen interface. Look at that. Um, does customer know how to use it, right? I know you're asking, does the customer know what they want, right? But are we assuming everyone's comfortable with technology? Which is good, if that's the assumption, that's totally fine. Does the customer know what they want? They place the order. Double interface allows customers to, to see their order, right? Uh, I can't see the rest. And menu item ingredients. Right, customer confirms your order, custom decides they want to eat at Burgers or us. Yeah, look at that. Customers want to order a custom item. Then again, that happens. All right, you're working on it. You're thinking the right things, right? Break it down so there is no ambiguity. How do you duplicate this chart? So you select all, you hold on your arrow key, uh, sorry, your mouse, and you press option and drag it, okay? Press option, drag it, press option, drag it. You can also add multiple decisions if you feel those decisions help alleviate the pain. You know, are you, do you already have an app? Go to the app. Does the person not have an app? Are you new to Burgers or Us? Those are all decision points that'll help you address and understand better the user problem. So you as a product designer can help understand the problem before coming up with a solution. Okay. There is a quote by Albert Einstein in which he says, if I had an hour to solve the hardest problem, I would spend 55 minutes understanding the problem and five minutes thinking about the solution. The same concept here, right? You guys can continue working. Um, if you have questions about the program, I'd love to Lainey to kind of come in and help tackle that. Um, and we can we can say we can see if you have questions regarding the program, regarding the cadence, what it includes, what it doesn't include. Uh, together, I'm sure we can help figure out okay. an answer. Yep. And if not, um, yeah, that's cool too. Uh, you'll get a follow-up email and you can ask any questions there. Um, <clears throat> and uh, in the follow-up, there's an opportunity for you to also speak to admissions if you have any you know, very specific questions because ultimately admissions is the the best people to talk to, especially if you have a very specific and unique uh, question slash situation. So, but if you have any questions, that's fine as well. We can uh, give you a few more minutes and then we can kind of wrap. All right. So I would just say um, this is actually going to be a diamond, right, guys? It's not going to be a square. Does that make sense? Does that make sense, guys? If it's a question, if it's a decision diamond, you want to make sure you use the decision diamond. All right, all right. 
Product design is just a way of thinking, guys. It's a way of thinking and people hire you to come in and offer that guiding light and get rid of biases and assumptions and not come in knowing and being the expert, but coming and know, coming, come in knowing that the answers are not yet here. We need to first uncover the problem and then we're gonna cover uncover the answer or the solution. Okay. Detailed menu, or um, I would just encourage you to use verbs on your steps, right? Select view detailed order. So instead of saying detailed menu, say view detailed menu, right? Select your order. Um, So here in the decision diamond, I would, instead of saying select, which seems like a step, it would say, do you want to customize this order, right? So this would say, do you want to customize this order? If yes, then follow these steps. If no, go ahead and finish off the order. Something to that effect. Make sense? Oh, look, there's a solution. User walks in, signs it with QR code. What happens if they don't have a phone? Right? So there could be a decision diamond here that's saying, if have phone, go ahead and sign in with the QR code. If you have, if you don't have phone or you don't know what a QR code is, because that's also possible. Right? I know my mom wouldn't know how to work that work a QR code situation if she walks into burger restaurants. So just account for all types of users, right? Um, is item available? That's a fair decision, right? That the cashier can make or the kiosk or the interface, whatever it is that you can do, right? All right. Don't know what's happening with this arrow, but maybe I can help. I hope it's this. Okay. Contactless ordering. Again, add a verb. I don't know who you are. <laughs> so I'm not sure who is um, on which section. But what I was just saying was oh, sure. Hold up. I'm going to send a link. Um, I was just saying that sometimes QR codes or the solution you have in mind aren't universally a solution for all types of users. So it's your responsibility to keep in mind and create an inclusive environment for all types of users who come in who are not maybe not as familiar with technology. Okay. Any last bit of questions, happy to take them. If not, I hope you guys really enjoyed this quick glance, at the world of product design and how we look at um, problems, challenges and solutions. Yes, thank you so much, everyone for joining. Um, I'm pretty sure they can still, you, you can still iterate on this yeah. once. Uh, this is open. Yep. This is your board now. Yes, this is your board. Please have fun with it. Uh, look out for the follow-up email. Um, thank you, Bonnie, for a brilliant workshop as usual. And thank you all for joining. I hope everyone has a great night. And for those of you that it is morning time, I hope you have a great day at work. <laughs> all right. See you, everyone. All right. Take care, guys.